Imagine being stuck 400 kilometers above Earth with no way home. That's exactly what just happened to three Chinese astronauts on the Tiangong space station, and it's the second time in two years we've seen something like this. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into a crisis that's unfolding right now in orbit and why it reveals a terrifying gap in our space capabilities. Here's what happened. A few weeks ago, space debris struck the Shenzhou-20 spacecraft while it was docked at China's Tiangong space station. The impact cracked the window of the return capsule. Now, that might not sound catastrophic, but when you're dealing with a vehicle that has to plunge through the atmosphere at thousands of degrees, even a tiny crack becomes a death sentence. The three astronauts aboard Shenzhou-20 had to extend their mission by nine days, sharing the cramped station with another crew that arrived on Shenzhou-21. Tiangong can technically hold six people, but it's really designed for three astronauts on six-month rotations. Things got crowded fast. On November 14th, China made a bold call. The Shenzhou-20 crew climbed into the newly arrived Shenzhou-21 spacecraft and rode it back to Earth, leaving the fresh crew behind. Problem solved, right? Not quite, because now those three astronauts have no escape vehicle. If a fire breaks out, if the station loses pressure, if anything goes catastrophically wrong, they're trapped. To their credit, China didn't waste time. Just three days after the incident, on November 17th, they issued an airspace closure notice. They're preparing Shenzhou-22 for an emergency launch around November 24th from the Juquan Satellite Launch Center in the Gobi Desert. This will be an uncrewed mission, carrying supplies and equipment, but most importantly, it'll serve as a lifeboat. China has always maintained a backup Long March 2F rocket and Shenzhou spacecraft on standby, claiming they could launch within eight and a half days in ideal conditions. This mission is launching about 20 days after the damage was discovered. That timeline accounts for real-world complications like launch pad availability, weather, range safety, and the need to sync with Tiangong's orbit. Once Shenzhou-22 arrives, the stranded crew can safely complete their full six-month mission and return home around April 2026. But there's still the question of what to do with the damaged Shenzhou-20. This is the first time in China's space program that a Shenzhou vehicle has been left in orbit while its crew returned on a different spacecraft. The damaged capsule is still docked at Tiangong, taking up a critical port that future missions need. China can't just leave it there forever. According to their November 14th statement, photo inspections, simulations, and wind tunnel testing all confirmed the same grim verdict. The return capsule's window glass has a crack that fails safety requirements for crewed re-entry. Even a small crack in heat-resistant glass could grow during the firing descent through the atmosphere. If it shattered, the layers beneath would be exposed to scorching plasma, potentially causing catastrophic pressure loss inside the capsule. For now, China says Shenzhou-20 will remain in orbit to support experiments. But eventually, they'll need to undock it and command a controlled re-entry over a remote part of the Pacific Ocean. It's a necessary loss to keep the station operational. If this story sounds familiar, it should. This is the second time in just two years that astronauts have been essentially stranded at a space station without their ride home. In June 2024, NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams flew Boeing Starliner to the International Space Station for what was supposed to be a 10-day mission, but Starliner developed helium leaks and thruster problems. NASA deemed it too risky to bring the astronauts home in the damaged capsule, so they sent Starliner back to Earth empty that September. Wilmore and Williams were reassigned to a long-duration mission and didn't make it home until March 2025, nine months later, aboard a SpaceX Crew Dragon. A 10-day trip turned into a nine-month ordeal. Space analyst experts have pointed out that both situations were lucky breaks. Things could have gone much worse. China deserves credit for making quick decisions and bringing their astronauts home within days. But these incidents are screaming a warning we can't ignore. We need a dedicated international space rescue capability and we need it now. Think about it. Here on Earth, we have rescue systems for everything. Sailors adrift in the ocean, Coast Guard helicopters. 
Skiers injured on remote mountains? Search and rescue teams. Survivors of plane crashes in the wilderness? Emergency responders mobilize within hours. But in space? Nothing. No rapid response system. No international rescue protocol. Energetic and confident tone, medium fast pace, clear articulation, American accent, slight urgency, modern tech news anchor style. If something goes catastrophically wrong in orbit, astronauts are on their own. This is especially troubling because we're sending more people into space than ever before. More countries, more commercial companies, more civilians. The lessons we learned from Apollo, Skylab, and the Space Shuttle era about the importance of in-space rescue seem to have faded from institutional memory, and that lapse is happening at the worst possible time. Engineers have studied space rescue for decades, and the mathematics are actually encouraging. The basic principle is simple. A crew only faces danger if both the main spacecraft and the rescue system fail simultaneously. Let's say you have a spacecraft with 90% reliability. Not great, right? But add a rescue system that also has 90% reliability and suddenly the crew's survival chances jump to 99%. That's because both systems would have to fail for the crew to be lost. This is crucial because making a spacecraft extremely reliable is incredibly expensive. Getting to 99% reliability costs a fortune, pushing to 99.9% .9 exponentially more. NASA has even considered launching crews on rockets with reliability as low as 77% as long as a 90% reliable rescue system was available. With that combination, crew survival chances could range from 91 to 99.6%. There are two main approaches to space rescue design. The first is the lifeboat concept. Build a small spacecraft that everyone climbs into and rides home. The challenge? Cramming multiple people and all the necessary life support systems into something small enough to launch quickly is incredibly difficult. The second approach is the parachute concept. Each astronaut leaves the damaged spacecraft individually using a personal escape device. The problem here is that a person-sized system has to survive the brutal conditions of re-entry. We're talking extreme air pressure, temperatures hot enough to melt metal, and the need to slow down from orbital velocity while keeping the astronaut alive and conscious.